Two weeks ago, I asked people to participate in a little experiment to help me explain some research on learning that I wanted to talk about. People saw words like this and like this, and they tried to remember as many of all the words as they could. Now, according to the generation effect, you should remember more words that you have to generate, like this one, and fewer words that you have to read, like this one. But if you look at the results, which I'm gonna talk about more of in a minute, it doesn't really seem like there's a strong generation effect. So what happened and why? Part of why it doesn't seem like it's a very strong effect comes down to a misunderstanding of what psychological effects actually are. From the first 255 people who commented with their results, 143 of them remembered more generated words than read words, and 112 of them either remembered the same number of each category or remembered more of the words that they read. Now, maybe this doesn't seem that impressive to you, but let's do a quick statistical test. Here I'm using a paired t-test, which just explores the difference in terms of number of words remembered between the two conditions, between the read condition and between the generate condition. Ba -ba -da -ba -da -ba -da. Boom. That's the paired t-test. Now look at this p-value. It's like 0 .0000009. This is, this is some publishable stuff right here. Highly significant confidence interval. Zero is nowhere near to be found. So this mean difference here is telling us what the average difference is between these two groups in terms of how many extra words would we expect to remember in the generate condition. So here we would expect to remember mm, almost one more word. But let's compare the effect size that we got in this experiment to other published results. So this is the effect size. It's about 0.3, which makes sense. What the effect size does is it tries to quantify how different those two groups are in terms of their standard deviations. The pooled standard deviation, I think, is around three, and the mean is around one, and so that's why we get a effect size of about a third, right? About a third of a standard deviation. This is a meta-analysis of other studies that try to test the generation effect under different kinds of conditions and with slightly different study protocols and different... But let's just look at some of the effect sizes which are in this column here. So there is, uh, we got 0 0.4, 0 0.41, 0 0.46, 0 0.55, 0 0.32, that's pretty close to ours. 0.32, that's pretty close to ours. 0 0.65, 0 0.28, that's even less than ours. Our effect size is on the low side, I would say, of the effects in the published literature, but it's in the ballpark. It's not crazy. Now, don't forget how low that p-value was. That means it's important. I also want to show you what this looks like visually. This plots the, the difference between how many words people remembered in the generate condition versus in the read condition. And every dot is a single data point. It's a single person. And uh, it's just what the difference is between the, the generate and the read. So if you look at this dot over here, this is someone who remembered a lot of words that they read, like maybe 12 or 13 or 14, and very few words that they generated, maybe like one or zero. On the other side, in the other corner, is the opposite. They uh, remembered a lot of words that they generated. They didn't remember nearly as many words that they read. You wanna imagine this line in the middle is a mirror. And so you can kind of just look and see, well, look, look at the, these dots over here in this group. The, this group is bigger than this group. And this group here is definitely bigger than that group. And this group is bigger than that group. So you can see more of the data is pushed towards the generation side than the read side. The generation effect doesn't mean that you're only going to remember words that you generate and you're not going to remember words that you read. It just means there is a pattern here that people tend to remember more words when they generate them than when they read them. Almost all of the psychological effects that you have ever heard of are like this. In any psychological or social phenomenon, there is always going to be variation. But what is the source of that variation? Some of that variation comes from things that we can't control or for reasons that we really don't know about. When you were doing this experiment, you might have been tired or you might have been wired. Maybe you just got off the phone with your mother when you watched this video 
And so maybe you were thinking more about that word or that word stuck out to you. Or maybe you were looking at college applications and the word college just was very memorable for you. But there's other sources of variation that we can account for or understand. As several commenters pointed out, the choice of encoding strategy probably makes a difference in terms of which words you remembered and whether the generation effect was actually going to happen for you. If you start grouping words into meaningful categories, you're going to remember words in these chunks. And that's probably going to diminish the generation effect. It's like you've got different bags of words that have both generated and red items in them. If you start to create a story as you see the words, the same kind of thing can happen. You're probably remember words that connect with that story really well or make more coherent sense with that story that you can fit in and you won't remember words that don't fit that story. So I expect that that would also drown out some of the generation effect. Some non-native speakers might have more trouble trying to generate the word in the first place when they reach a word that has blanks in it than they would just reading the word normally. If you never figure out what the word is, then I don't see how you can really remember it. Now, I didn't ask people to provide their encoding strategy or to say whether they were a native or non-native speaker of English, but a lot of commenters volunteered that information, which was awesome. First, let me show you the graph of either non-native speakers or people who are employing special memory techniques. This line is pushed more towards the right side, meaning that there's more data on the read side. So these two groups, at least when combined, together, but also separately because I did the analysis separately as well, remember more in the read condition. So that kind of substantiates our intuition. So if I take those people out of the data, what happens? We can look at this paired t-test. It's here. Wow, we have an even smaller p-value, right? We have a larger t-value. This is all as we expect it. Now the mean difference is over one. So the people who were not saying that they used some kind of special technique and the people that did not say that they were a non-native speaker uh, on average remembered a little bit more than one word in the generation condition than in the read condition. Now we can look at the effect size. The effect size is right here, 0.4, so it's jumped pretty substantially now. But this is more in line with some of those meta-analyses we were talking about earlier. We got to be careful when we do this kind of thing because I did not ask people to specifically say whether they were a native or a non-native speaker. I did not ask people to say what special encoding technique they were using. And because of that, I don't know how many people in the data set used a special memory technique but just didn't say it, or were a non-native speaker but just didn't say it. And so really we don't have good data on those variables. This is just kind of a curiosity thing, a speculative thing. If we were to do another experiment, this would be something that is like, oh, I should really ask people about their encoding technique. I should really ask people if they're a non-native speaker, maybe how many years they've been speaking English. Other sources of variation come from the choices that I made as I set up the experiment. I chose to do this letter fill in the blank kind of thing instead of something else. I chose to only include 15 words in each category rather than 30 or rather than five. I chose to alternate presentations rather than to block or randomize presentations. I chose to have each word appear for three seconds instead of half a second or instead of five seconds. I chose to ask people to remember the words about one minute later rather than five minutes or rather than a day later. I chose to tell people to remember the words that they were going to see and kind of implied that there would be a memory test later. Each of these choices has the potential to impact the size of the generation effect. So let's just look at three real quick. There's a fair amount of evidence, I think, that the presentation speed of words in these experiments like this impacts the kinds of encoding strategies that people use. So my intuition is that if I used a much faster presentation speed, that would actually increase the generation effect because it makes using more sophisticated encoding strategies more difficult. It seems like you get larger generation effects when people try to learn these words incidentally, right? They're not told specifically that they have to remember them or that there's gonna be a test on them or anything like that. I suspect that this difference also comes down to encoding strategies because when you tell people to try to remember something that triggers more sophisticated encoding strategies. So we would have probably gotten a larger effect if I would have said, 
nothing. Like, you don't have to remember these words. I'm just gonna put these words on the screen. Who knows, remember them or not. The most recent papers that I've read also suggest that generation tends to slow down the memory decay over time. So if we all took the test the next day, instead of like a minute later, we probably would have gotten a larger generation effect. A final source of error here comes from how we're gathering the data. Viewers are entering their data by hand and I am transcribing it by hand. And I'm trying not to make any transcription errors, but I would not be surprised if someone along the line accidentally hit a six when they meant a five, or I flip flopped the results when I entered it in. I wouldn't expect these to favor one condition over the other because I think the mistakes would be equally distributed. But even a few mistakes in a small sample like this could be enough to shade things one way or the other. Someone in the comments mentioned that because they remembered more words in the read condition than in the generation condition, that their results contradicted the theory. That's not quite right. The generation effect is not a theory. It's a pattern of results that we see across similar experiments. So if you set things up like we did, it works. If you use antonyms, still get a generation effect. If you scramble letters, still get a generation effect. If you use math problems, still get a generation effect. The theory part comes up in how we explain this pattern that we see. So there's this idea that more cognitive effort means better memories. It's certainly a pattern that you see across many different studies. But if that were the case, then it seems like harder generation tasks would result in larger effect sizes. And that's not what we see. Like a lot of psychological phenomena, it seems like there are multiple mechanisms that are working together or sometimes contrasting with each other to produce the overall effect that we call the generation effect. If you wanna read more about the theory, there are references in the description. But before we go, I want to talk to you about something very, very important. Do you like this kind of content? If you do, I am building a membership site, which is kind of like a Patreon, where members will get early access to YouTube videos, they'll have access to courses and exclusive content that I create for the site. Um, there will be Q&A sessions and lots of general chit chat. And hopefully as we build this community, we'll be able to run experiments kind of like this one, only a bit more interesting. If you want to be among the first people to sign up and you want to shape this community as it grows, there's a link in the description. You can click it, write down your email, and I will email you as soon as this website launches. Phew. The advertisement's over. Thank you for watching. I'll see you next time.